Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Boomi World 2018. Brought to you by Dell Boomi. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at the Encore Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We're at Dell Boomi World 2018, second annual Dell Boomi World. And we're here with one of Dell Boomi and De Dell's biggest GSIs. We've got Jason Cook, the global client account lead at Accenture serving Dell. Jason, thanks for joining John and me today. Thank you. So, Second annual Dell Boomi World, bigger yes. than last year. They were talking today a lot of, a lot of interesting numbers. Uh, 7,500 plus customers to date. They're adding five new customers every day. Uh, I saw the Gartner Magic Quadrant from earlier this year in iPads. They are right up there in that strong leader category. Talk to us about the, the relationship that you have with Dell Technologies and the business unit of Dell Boomi. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, so, so Accenture is, has become very big. I think we now have 470,000 global employees and in our brand and presence is technology, advisory, and delivery. It predominates what we do. And so, um, what's interesting about you know, Dell and, and specifically Boomi is, you know, being so central to the technology ecosystem, there's much opportunity for partnership where, where Dell is present with enterprise clients, we're present too, and we, we tend to have long-running relationships with those clients. Most of our clients are tenured over 15 years, and so it gives us an opportunity to, um, to have the type of long-standing relationship that Dell has with clients and, and um, advise on technology trends and change and, and bring kind of the best thinking of the marketplace into clients as they look to solve problems. And of course, Dell is central to that solution set as, as Boomi is too. And yesterday they announced a new technology partner program. Dell Boomi has a broad partner ecosystem, embedded partners, implementation, GSIs. Talk to us about that and the maybe new business opportunities that it will give to Accenture. Yeah, so we've had, uh, we've enjoyed a, a relationship over the past several years in, in Europe working with Boomi. And we, we incubated a program over there called Accenture Growth Partnerships where with emerging companies such as Boomi, we've gone to market, leveraged the Accenture channel, and then brought scale to those technologies to deliver you know, at, at enterprise level for their expectations. It's been very successful, uh, you know, seen on both sides as a, as, a, as a real win, and we're now transferring that into the North America market. So we're uh, based on the, on the heels of that success, we're looking to formalize some of the things we've been doing internationally into North America, a larger market for both of us, and so it's expanded opportunity in both places. Jason, talk about Accenture's own transformation. We've been following yeah. you guys for, I mean, I've been following Accenture when they changed their name, but <laughs> recently you guys have invested in the past decade, really early in data science. Yes. You guys have been on the cloud, public cloud, very early. Yes. You've been partnering with your customers, and so that's all great, you guys do a good job with that. But what's interesting is you're actually helping them change their business model. Yes. So how has your own transformation within Accenture, dealing with Dell, he's been doing a trillion dollars in business, millions and millions of servers sold, his customers are changing, you guys are in that business model enablement business, you're helping customers. What's the big business model impact that's happening in the market right now? Well, I, I think you know, as it pertains to Accenture, yeah, we've grown. I, I would say one of the one of the hallmarks of the growth has been around digital, and I think 60% of our revenues are now digitally oriented, which are in the areas you described. So, um, so that's become our brand and presence in the majority of what we do in the marketplace. I think the things that we're doing to serve clients, which are several things that we've done internally, have been around um, all sorts of. of digitally enabled journeys, whether it's the intelligent enterprise, you know, the connected customer, uh, you know, the, the adoption of platforms and the expanded use of, you know, as a service within enterprises. There are plays within all those spaces where we end up bringing enablement to those clients. You know, examples would be in the retail space, you know, growth and, and expansion of, uh, Omni-channel techniques, you know, so that the same customer experience exists across anywhere in retail. Uh, programs around single views of customer are very, very common for us globally. Um, in in areas like, you know, traditionally, um, you know, less technical areas of the business, like a, a supply chain operation that's 
dominated by manufacturing and fulfillment and brick and mortar in the retail space, you know, the uh, kind of the, the real-time visibility challenges yeah. that have historically been there are only now being able to be solved by technologies, and so there's several different. And cloud certainly is horizontally scaled, so it impacts all industries that you play yes. in, so good for business. But the challenge that CIOs have that we talk to, we hear and I want to get your reaction to is, okay, I love technology scale, I need to have proof points, I got to have mile markers that are going to be attainable with you know, yeah. time to value. But the number one thing they say is, I got to bring a competitive advantage into IT. Yes. In a cloud construct across that's horizontally scalable and work with partners in areas that aren't core. So leverage supplier relationships, but build a core intellectual property or competitive advantage with IT. Right. How do you guys um, help them? What are some trends? What are, what are those IP moments for your large and medium-sized customers? Yeah, I, I think that um, you know, because we have the heritage, the, um, the heritage of both advising on and delivering technology, um, where, where we tend to work closely with CIOs is around uh, kind of the speed to value of delivering on programs. We represent a wealth of experience and, and work in the marketplace and, and those learnings you know, can be brought to different clients and fundamentally that's what's valuable to them. So I think that you know, when, we, when we talk about cloud enablement, um, it's often a matter too of thinking through what are the specific business outcomes that can be delivered um, from the use of technology. And so clients, for example, um, you know, I can think of some clients that you know, one company that has you know, 1,400 legacy applications and a cloud footprint, and yet the business initiatives that come into the IT they organization. must use containers a lot. <laughs> yeah, well exactly. And so, yet the questions that come into the IT organization are often ones around, um, you know, how could we improve our visibility to product line profitability, yeah. as an example. And so, um, the, the use of cloud, the use of integration technologies like Boomi accelerates the ability to connect information from that disparate environment and deliver outcomes. And specifically more tactical, how, to get those outcomes, what specific things do you see? Is it the cloud native? Is it the role of data? How are CIOs getting down and saying, okay, I'm going to lock in on this as territory we're going to build around and build on top of yeah. data, cloud, um, and IOT's new and everyone knows what IOT is, and it's going to be part of a, either physical and or low hanging fruit, but what are they building on from an IT standpoint? Is it the data, is it the network, is it the storage? So what do you, what do you see yeah, there? Yeah, I think, I think it is the data. I think that's where we see, data led seems to be the thinking in most of these cases around getting, you know, getting information consistently consumed you know, throughout, because the, 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 the world has become so data intensive that ac you know, access to data is not the problem, it's the, integration and you know, the, the der derivation yeah. of value from it. And it's scale too, I mean. The scale, right, <laughs> yeah. Of the low cloud, so cloud and data seem to be. And, it, and it's become more distributed too, and so you know, dealing with distributed data sources and normalizing has been the. That's where Boomi thing. comes in, integrating all that stuff Absolutely. in. Absolutely. So cloud and data seem to be the pattern across the board, That's generically right. speaking. I mean, obviously certain industries, financial service, oil and gas, have unique requirements. They all have their own cases for it, but yes. you know, whether you're a, you know, a distributed bank or yeah. whether you're a distributed retailer or whether you're dealing with oil wells in distributed locations, yeah. you run into common problems yeah. across all industries. But integration is so much more as the iPath market has evolved. It's so much more than integrating applications. It's integrating applications, data from existing sources, from new sources, mm -hmm. the API economy is essential for that, to enable an organization to create a customer experience that's going to allow them to use that data yeah. and continue to get more customers, more data, and, and evolve faster than their competition. But transformation is, is, a, is a big challenge, yeah. right? And, and here, well, in even Dell Technologies world, the theme was about making it real, making it real for digital transformation, that's security right. transformation, huge priority, workforce. Um, how when, when Accenture's going into in, to uh, integrate, at, whether it's a retailer or an oil and gas company, how do you help them start? What's that start of a transformation? What it often is the, the transformations you were just referring to. Our, our typical engagement profile is, ranges from you know, how, how do I engage my workforce in a new way, or you know, how, do I, how do I improve visibility across a distributed you know, network of Retail stores or banks or what have you, um, and so the, those are the transformations. And then, and then inevitably, um, 
you know, the, the connection of information across those things become the enabling source. If you take as an example a customer experience program where, you know, let's, let's talk about a, a government example where they're, you know, they, they want a single view of a citizen, a taxpayer, what, whatever it may be. There's, there's so much information on that person in so many disparate places that has to be brought together in a cohesive way. Not only that, but brought together and then used to effectively in serving that person and that's where you know, we see a lot of value. Jason, <laughs> I want to pick your brain while you're here because Accenture's always got the smart people who know what's going on and you got big customers, big examples. There's a dynamic right now between two kind of personas, we're kind of making it generic for, for the conversation now. Persona one is the business executive who's responsible and chartered to drive the digital transformation with new and improved applications. Yes. Taking advantage of the legacy, bringing in the new, managing them either on their own schedule. And the second persona is the person deploying cloud. Yeah. So how are companies organizing around this, these, these personas? One's got to be under the hood, I got to do multi-cloud, I got to do Kubernetes, I got to do all these things. Yeah. Stateless applications, stateful applications, integrate them all together, I'm deploying it, and then the business persona, hey, you know, take that hill, more apps, more outcomes. So how are companies organizing around these dynamics? What's the best practice? Yeah, along the lines you described, so specifically, um, you know, the, the business functions are becoming aligned with application domains and, and those tend to be programmatically managed and so we see structures around that programmatic management um, to be very responsive to business needs and particularly as, as clock speeds accelerate on delivery, maintaining that partnership is very, very important. Likewise, on the, you know, on the infrastructural side, we see alignment there too to take advantage of you know, creating platforms and, and enablement and uh, infrastructure and delivery capabilities that can deliver on that promise. So they're working together on pizza teams or yeah. like agile teams. So it's a it's a customer focused model for the for the programmatic work, and it's an industrialization and an acceleration on the infrastructural side. And that's again where there's strong fit with some. Do you of these have products. a favorite example? Speaking of that, you know, so yeah. many departments lines of business uh, need to have access to the same amount of, the same data to yes. be able to develop new products and services, tune things, make things better, faster than their competition. So there's this sort of democratization and this need to be able to share the information so that the entire business can grow yes. together. Do you have a favorite example of, of an organization of any industry that you've worked with that you've seen really do that well so that that business, at the end of the day, everyone's playing well together because they have to and the business now is connecting customers, vendors, partners, and delivering experiences yeah. that are truly differentiating. Um, integration programs, data programs, data lake programs, data science programs often have a governance mechanism out in front of them to prioritize the needs of the business and and not both, both in the back in terms of enablement of, of different sources of information being accessed, but also the uses on the front end. And so, you know, that is a, uh, that is a practice that we're seeing grow exponentially. Um, the other thing that's interesting, I think, in terms of um, a best practice is that um, as intelligence accelerates and companies bec become more analytically driven, um, the, pro the, the traditional process of continuous improvement, which used to be um, defined in terms of Six Sigma events and other things where once in a while a function would be evaluated for efficiencies, becomes a continuous capability. So in this governance model, the ability to refine and tune and improve things like integration, AI, analytics, on a continuous cycle as opposed to having it be event driven is, is certainly an emerging trend and a best practice that we see a lot of. Well Jason, thanks so much for joining the program with John and me today and sharing with us what's new with Accenture and Dell Boomi and how you're helping customers globally truly transform. It's a pleasure, thank you for having me. And for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Boomi World 2018 in Las Vegas. John and I will be right back with our next guest.